Hi, I'm Shlomi from Job Test Prep, and on this video we're going to talk about the dreaded UCAT test. What it is, what are the five different test sections, including sample questions and tips, and how to make sure you smash the UCAT on your first try. Let's roll! The UCAT exam, previously known as the UK CAT exam, stands for University Clinical Aptitude Test. It's an admission exam you must take if you're applying to medicine or dentistry courses in several universities across the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. The UCAT test is made up of five separate subtests. Every section has a different time limit and different number of questions. It's a two-hour, multiple-choice, computer-based test. You will be given a set of laminated noteboards and a pen. A non-scientific on-screen calculator is implemented in the test interface. The UCAT is not a test of knowledge, but a test of mental abilities. That means the questions are very different from anything you've experienced before on school or university. Now let's go over each of the UCAT sections and solve some sample questions. This subtest assesses your reading comprehension and verbal critical reasoning skills. You'll have 21 minutes to answer 44 questions. That's less than 30 seconds per question. Here's a sample question that resembles those you'll see on the real exam. Pause the video to read it carefully. According to the passage, the laureate's findings may eventually lead to a better understanding of the spatial losses that occur in Alzheimer's. We cannot tell at this point what practical uses, if any, can derive from the scientist's findings. Therefore, the correct answer is cannot say. Did you get that one right? Let's move on to the second subtest of the UCAT, decision making. This subtest consists of questions that refer to charts, diagrams, and other types of data representation to assess your ability to apply logic and reach conclusions based on the given information. You'll have 32 minutes to answer 29 questions. Let's look at a diagram sample question. Pause the video, try to answer it yourself, then continue watching to see if you got it right. While practicing this type of questions, try to follow these steps. 1. Start by scanning the short text that accompanies the diagram. Grasp the subject of the question and its context. 2. Skip the diagram and its legend and read the question instead. 3. Read the first answer and recognize its relevant shapes in the diagram. Now that you know what you're looking for, use the legend to check whether the first answer is correct. 4. If the answer is incorrect, move on to the second one and repeat. In our case, answer A is incorrect because the circle and the triangle do not overlap. Answer B is incorrect because the triangle and the diamond do not overlap. Answer D is incorrect because every part of the trapezoid overlaps with another shape. The correct answer is C, because there is an overlap between the circle and the square which does not contain parts of any other shape. Remember, in the actual exam you don't need to check every answer. If you think you have the correct answer, don't spend more time with other answers. Let's move on to the third UCAT subtest, the quantitative reasoning. The 24-minute quantitative reasoning section is comprised of 36 questions, arranged in 9 sets of 4. Each set includes a preliminary description of the question, usually accompanied by a table, graph, or chart. Take a look at this sample question. To answer the question, we need to understand the chart. You are asked to find the number of people, and not percentages, who chose soup as their preferred food. Thus, the relevant column is the rightmost one. 9% of the survey respondents, male and female, liked soup. Out of 12,000 people, that is 1,080 people. Let's move on to the abstract reasoning section. The abstract reasoning section is comprised of 55 items to be answered in 13 minutes. This section is designed to examine a candidate's ability to identify certain logic or a set of criteria based on minute details under severe time constraints. UCAT abstract reasoning questions can be divided into three question types. Assign a test shape to a set, diagrammatic series, 
or shape analogies. Let's try a sample question. Try to determine whether the following test shape belongs to set A, B, or neither. Once again, pause the video and try to answer yourself. To identify a set's logic, begin by focusing on just two or three sections of the set. Find which rules and logic govern these sections, and then check the others to see if they follow the same rules and logic. In our case, on set A, there is exactly one pair of identical shapes that differ only in size. One of them is large, and the other is small. On set B, there is an equal number of large and small shapes. The test shape belongs to set B, since there is an equal number of large and small shapes. The test shape does not belong to set A, since there are two pairs that match the rule in A, and not exactly one. Now let's advance to the last UCAT subtest, the Situational Judgment Test. The Situational Judgment section is used to find those with the most appropriate professional behaviors. These behaviors are considered essential for candidates to become successful in their new clinical careers. You'll have 26 minutes to read the instructions and answer 68 multiple choice questions related to 21 scenarios. Try this sample question. The right answer is appropriate, but not ideal. There are several competencies that are important for medical professionals to possess and are assessed in the SJT section. While answering a situational judgment question, try to identify the underlying competencies the question assesses, and then rate the responses according to the principle you're asked about. The underlying competencies this question focuses on are maintaining professional standards and cognitive skills. Structured support systems are designed to allow participants to learn about topics they may be unfamiliar with under the support and supervision of a superior. While this is very important to do if you're new to the field of medicine, Dr. Prabhakar has been working as a GP for over 15 years, and so it is not essential that he does this. Other methods could be more useful for him to keep his practice up to date. So, we've almost reached the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful. For more info and practice tests, check out our dedicated UCAT page. The link is in the description. If you have any questions or want to contribute anything, be sure to leave a comment below. Good luck on your exam!